when I came home and told my mom that I was interested in funeral service, she immediately took me to the Monsignor of our parish because she needed him to pray over my soul. She believed that I had been possessed by the devil and was in need of salvation. For me, it was, it, it was funny because I couldn't imagine a more apropos occupation that parallels uh, the religious orders. And that's essentially what the Monsignor told my mom. He said there is no reason to pray for her soul because she has already given herself to an occupation that will be in service of others. My name is Jolena Grande. I am a faculty member in the Mortuary Science Program here at Cypress College. Back in 1989, when I first started in the Mortuary Science Program at Cypress College, 90 to 95% of the class was filled with gentlemen. In fact, you would consider them the traditional gentlemen. They were young, they were white, they were well-to-do. I was one of four women in my class. Of course, that has markedly changed as uh, I just celebrate the graduating class of spring 2022, all of them were women the majority of which were uh, women that would claim to be Latina or Hispanic or African-American. Very different demographics. When people come to Cypress College and they look at the curriculum in mortuary science, they are most excited about restorative art and embalming. And they really do not come for funeral service administration or any of the classes I teach. They're excited about the things that you would expect them to be excited about. However, over time, they begin to appreciate how all of them are woven together. So right now we don't have any remains in house, um, but this is our on-campus embalming lab. And when students are here during the semester, we have remains. Um, historically, we would embalm the remains of uh, the indigent from a local county. That of course um, uh, provides a, a multitude of experiences for students to see remains that are in varying states of decomposition, uh, from a number of different disease processes um, on, our, on our cot here. It's not a set of remains, but it is our beloved rescue Randy. Um, we use him to simulate remains as we train students on how to make removals to position remains. We also use him for practice in dressing uh, remains and moving them from point A to point B because it actually takes an awful lot of uh, musculature to be able to manipulate remains and get them on and off the cot, get the cot in and out of the removal vehicle. And then of course, uh, dressing is a whole new uh, adventure for them. If they've ever had a toddler learning how to dress a toddler, this becomes very similar to that. I would say more than anything, people expect funeral directors or embalmers or morticians to be pasty white people that are just waiting to get their hands on your body. Um, and that, of course, is because of the horror films that have really exacerbated that image. And for many of our women in funeral service, that's the first thing that they have to overcome is the public's perspective of what we should look like versus what we actually look like. And then the second thing they have to overcome is the propensity for people to think that we don't belong. We're too young, we're too short, we're too frail. And that's not true. That's not true for men or women. They hire those that do the job and do the job well, which is why so many women find a lot of employment opportunities in funeral service, because it's been found time and time again that grieving families relate well to women. And women are very compassionate. They are natural caregivers. And historically, when we look at the development of embalming as an occupation, we saw that handling the remains years and years before embalming took place was done by the same 
same people who handled babies, your nurses, your midwives, and then of course there was another group known as Layers Out of the Dead. They were all women. And in today's environment, even if you find that the ownership structure is still primarily dominated by men, those on the front line who are doing the work, they're women.